Welcome back. Gabriel is in love with an uptown girl. Malia Getty. And we managed to uh, lie ourselves into getting an interview with her. Of course, our interest is not purely personal. Although in Gabriel's case, I think mostly. She might actually know something about the murder at Lake Pontchartrain. Can you tell me anything about what happened out of the lake? I wish I could, but I've never seen or heard anything unusual at the lake, and I do spend quite a bit of time out there. That's a shame, then. Can you tell me anything about what happened out of the lake? I wish I could, but I've never seen or heard anything unusual at the lake, and I do spend quite a bit of time out there. Oh well. Oh, there's nothing else to do but flirt with her. That's a terrible idea, but uh, a man must follow his instincts. Excuse me, but your eyes are really distracting. I don't think I've ever seen a color quite like that brownish gold. It's so deep and rich. Man, if I could bottle that, I'd make a fortune. Thank you, Detective. That's an interesting observation, though probably not relevant to your case. A good detective never knows what might be relevant, Miss Getty. Then you must be truly exceptional at your job. I think this has gone on long enough. You're not really a detective, are you? Who, me? Well, I am on this case, Miss Getty. I saw you at the lake yesterday. I thought you must be with the police since you were there, but you don't act like a police officer. Besides, I'm rather certain that the other man said his name was Mosley. All right, you caught me. I'm not with the police. My name is Gabriel Knight. I'm a writer working with Detective Mosley on a book. Well, Mr. Knight, now that we've established who you are, perhaps you can tell me the real reason you're here. Well, I am researching the book. And I thought you might have seen or heard something at the lake. I don't like liars, Mr. Knight. Okay, okay, you're right. I, I really just wanted to see you again. You can be mad at me if you want, but I swear, I've never done anything like this before. Mr. Knight, you've lied about your identity and wasted my time with meaningless questions. If it weren't vaguely flattering, I'd really be angry. You're lucky I don't call the real police. I think you should go, Mr. Knight. Malia, wait. If you just give me a chance. I've wasted enough time. I'll have Robert show you out. Robert? Show Mr. Knight out, please. I most certainly will. Thank you very much. I had a lovely time. Ah, shit. Well, that went about as well as could be expected. And I have a feeling they're not going to let us in again. Let's see... Um, we might want to check out the uh, Voodoo Museum again, because hopefully the owner, Dr. John, is uh, there this time. Welcome. My friend. Hello. I am the proprietor, Dr. John. If you have any questions, I will be happy to assist. Great. My name is Knight, and I'll probably take you up on that. That's great. And uh, Dr. John actually is voiced by Michael Dorn. Mr. Worf from Star Trek The Next Generation, in case you didn't know. He has also done uh, other voiceover work. You might know him, for instance, from I Am Weasel, where he voices the title character, who is also called I Am Weasel. And let's talk to him, because if anybody's going to know about voodoo, it must be him. This is quite a place you have here. 
Thank you, Mr. Knight. I have dedicated myself to the preservation of this unique culture. It is gratifying to see others reap the fruits I have sown. So where'd you pick up all this stuff? Oh, here and there. We accept donations of any pertinent items. Did you ever get any wackos in here? You mean, besides yourself? Yeah, yeah, besides me. I do not care to make those kind of judgments, Mr. Knight. All are welcome here. We're pretty quick to judge me. You're a big guy, aren't you? Do you work out? Play sports? I do not play basketball, if that is what you want to know. Who, me? No. You just look like such a natural athlete. I do find ways of keeping fit, Mr. Knight. After all, our bodies are temples. You sound like Grace. I should get the two of you together. Is Grace your wife? No, she just acts like it. Fair enough description. So what do you think of our summer weather? Have you ever seen it so overcast or so muggy? It is unpleasant. The heavens are not pleased these days. Nice outfit. I prefer simple cotton to dead flesh, Mr. Knight. I'll have to remember that. So, how is the museum business? Those who truly seek understanding are few, Mr. Knight. But even one can be an audience. Yep. Sounds about like my shop. <laughs> so, where'd you pick- Oh? I think that's all of it. Let's actually um, ask him some relevant questions. Could I ask you some questions? That is why I am here. Well, you're already more helpful than the girl from yesterday. And I think he is um, well acquainted with Voodoo, so let's start there. What can you tell me about voodoo? Historical voodoo? Or the voodoo currently practiced in the city? Okay, well, let's start with historical voodoo and then work our way up to the present, I suppose. Tell me about historical voodoo. Very well. I will start at the beginning, Mr. Knight, and will go on from there at your prompting. Sounds good. As you may know, Voodoo is a grassroots religion formed by the mixing together of many different African tribal religions and Anglo religions, such as Catholicism or Protestantism. In other words, it is a religion born of the African slave trade, but African slaves were imported not only by the United States, but also into the West Indies where the French and Spanish ran plantation islands. Prior to 1803, the New Orleans area was owned by France. The French Creole in those days owned many African slaves. But the Creole did not permit their slaves to gather, giving no chance for Voodoo to breed here natively. The Creole also knew enough about the corrupted pagan practices of the West Indies slaves to ban the importing of slaves from that region. This is what TV Tropes calls showing your work. They sure did their research for this game. So, how did Voodoo come to New Orleans? After the Louisiana Purchase, American legislators relaxed regulations. Slaves were permitted to gather. The Americans also removed the ban on West Indies slaves. Around the same time, a slave revolt occurred in Santo Domingo, what is now Haiti. Between the lifting of the ban and the Haitian revolt, West Indies slaves began pouring into New Orleans. Some of them were free people of color, freed or escaped slaves. Some came with their white owners who were fleeing from the revolt. So you're saying Haitians are revolting? Okay, bad joke. What happened when the West Indies slaves got here? They brought voodoo with them. The native slaves were more than enthusiastic about embracing it. It gave them power, Mr. Knight, if only in the form of a communal bond. Among the first meeting places were the Bayou St. John and the shore of Lake Pontchartre. The early voodoos were heavy snake worshippers, worshipping the one they called the Great Zombie. 
More snakes! And now we've got zombies into the mix too. Fun. Tell me more about historical voodoo. By 1817, the voodoo activities were beginning to cause fear among the white slave owners. An ordinance was passed to forbid slave gatherings except in designated public areas at designated times. The time was Sunday afternoons and the place, Congo Square. The slaves and free people of color gathered to dance simulations of their voodoo dances right in sight of Creole society. Of course, they also continued to meet in private for the real thing. How did they do that, uh, if they were forbidden from doing so? Tell me more about historical voodoo. There were a variety of kings and queens at first. Voodoo priests and priestesses. But from about 1830, a single power emerged. This was a voodoo queen named Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau ruled voodoo in New Orleans for many years. That's a name we've heard before. And now we have it as a new option to talk uh, about, not just for him, but for everyone. Tell me more about historical voodoo. I've given you as much detail as I can, Mr. Knight. Look around the museum if you desire more information. Alright, in that case let's go into a little more detail about Marie Laveau. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaus, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to the mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. When the Widow Paris began to practice, there were many voodooans in the city. By 1830, she was voodoo queen of all New Orleans. That's impressive. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Widow Paris was a hairdresser for rich Creole ladies. She also paid household servants to spy for her. Between the two, she knew everything about everyone who mattered in New Orleans. She was not above using her information to appear psychic, to intimidate, or even to blackmail. You sound as though you admire her. For a black woman in the mid-1800s to gain power is an incredible thing, Mr. Knight, however she achieved it. I suppose. Still doesn't sound uh, that great. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. She kept a pet snake, danced with it too. She held traditional voodoo ceremonies out by the lake. She took herself seriously. Very seriously. But she was not above selling tickets for her events to curiosity seekers. She was not above using voodoo any way she could to make money. That is for certain. But if she had been in another line of work, in another age, that would have been interpreted as entrepreneurial genius rather than a sign of fraudulence. Hey, you don't need to convince me. I admire anyone that can actually make a living. Well, the, uh, you know what they say? If there's something you're good at, charge for it. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. It was Marie Laveau who defined the voodoo that is truly and uniquely the voodoo of New Orleans. She invented hundreds, if not thousands of spells, potions, charms, and incantations. These form the basis of the modern practice, not to mention the folk tradition of hoodoo. Interesting stuff, but we'll have to continue talking to him in the next video.